This episode of the anime begins with Angeline and Gail San, where Angeline asks Gail San why she didn't come to the palace. Gail San explains that she didn't receive an invitation, so she will wait at the inn, as nobles and adventurers don't usually mix well. From their perspective, they offer them a favor by giving them a job. And carriage arrives, and Angeline gets off, greeted by her friend who tells her she will fix many things she didn't like and advises her not to react. Angeline assures her that she will do her best to stay positive. Gail San leaves, and we see Angeline carrying her bag inside the palace. Someone tells her to stay and offers a variety of delicious foods. Angeline approaches a cup and hesitates to drink from it. Suddenly, a man enters and asks if she is the warrior with black hair, Angeline. She nods, and he tells her not to be so friendly. She asks who he is, and he gets angry, questioning how she dares to talk to him like that. Angeline apologizes, mentioning she's from the countryside. The man, revealed as Villard Eastigal, calms down, saying he'll overlook her rudeness because she defeated the Demon King. He introduces himself and asks if she has heard of him. Angeline shakes her head, and he laughs, saying his name echoes even in rural areas like Orphine. Villard sits with Angeline at the table, and they share tea. He inquires about the strength of the Demon King, and she confirms his power. Villard tells her to take pride in defeating him, as it will improve his father's opinion of him. He advises her not to let her brother receive all the praise. Angeline asks about the celebration ceremony, and Villard says it will be in three days. He then calls a servant to take Angeline to rest, bathe, and wear a beautiful dress. He instructs her to learn basic etiquette to avoid causing trouble. As Villard leaves, he warns her not to stir up too much trouble and exits. Angeline asks the maid about the man, and the translation ends with the question of who that young man is. The maid informs her that he is the second son of the eldest duke. The scene then transitions to three maids expressing admiration for Angeline due to her slim figure and beautiful hair. They contemplate hairstyles and dress colors that would suit her. Angeline, feeling tired from her journey, asks them to postpone the discussion until the next day. The scene shifts to Angeline sitting, and one of the maids brings her dinner. Angeline is surprised to see that the maid is her friend Gail San. Gail San reveals that she sneaked inside since social events are crowded, making entry easy during the chaos. After finishing their meal, Angeline asks Gail San why she infiltrated, and Gail San explains that she suspects something suspicious. She tells Angeline that even the second son of the eldest duke and influential noble families, including the crown prince of Rosia, were invited. It's a significant occasion. Gail San mentions that Villard, the second son of the Duke, suggested Angeline's name when the Crown Prince asked for a star to perform, as he competes with his brother Ferdinand and everything. They're not exactly enemies, but their relationship with their younger brother isn't good. Someone knocks on the door, and Gail San opens it to an angry girl, Leslet, the eldest Duke's daughter. She demands that Angeline open the door immediately. Gail San informs Angeline that she's Leslet, and she enters, taking a seat. Leslet asks Angeline about her adventures, expressing her love for such stories. Angeline recalls her past when she asked her father to tell her stories. Leslet asks Angeline to share a captivating adventure, and Angeline wonders which story she'd like to hear. Later, we see Leslet thanking Angeline, stating that her story was very entertaining, and she considers them friends from that day forward. Because she wanted an adventurous friend, Angeline tells Leslet that she agrees to become friends. Leslet then stands up and informs Angeline that she will reveal her secret. The scene transitions to Leslet and Angeline heading down to the dungeons and going to the cell where Kasim is held. Kasim informs them that he told Leslet not to come back to him, angering her. She questions his tone after she brought him a drink. Kasim stands up and asks if she brought her friend this time. Leslet introduces Angeline as the Demon Kingslayer, and Angeline introduces Kasim. Angeline asks why Kasim is imprisoned, and he explains that they caught him after he escaped from a restaurant without paying. He then used his magic to take a bottle of drink from Leslet. Angeline observes that he seems to be a very powerful sorcerer and asks if he wants to get out of the cell. Kasim replies that he doesn't have much to do outside. Angeline expresses that looking at him makes her feel like something valuable is wasted. Kasim says she's right and that he wasted his life. Angeline then asks if he has friends that he cares about, and Leslet looks at her, questioning if only adventurers can understand that. 
Angeline mentions that the place is very cold, and she wants to leave. The scene transitions to Angeline lying in bed, showing signs of exhaustion. She wonders about her father's current actions and falls asleep. The scene then shifts to the Adventurer's Guild, where the Guild Master places his hand on his cheek, wondering if Angie-san is okay. He hasn't seen her for a long time and hopes that the city she went to will provide the support she needs. At that moment, the Red Ogre and the girl enter the Guild, greeting everyone. The Guild Master recognizes them, and the Red Ogre introduces himself as Angie's father, expressing his desire to meet her. At this time, Angie's friends approach the Red Ogre and express their happiness at seeing him again. They inquire about the reason for his visit, and the boy with the hat mentions that Angie is not here. The Academy director intervenes and informs them that Angie went to receive an honor in the western part of Tokyo City and will stay for only 10 days. Seeing the Academy head sitting on the floor in such a manner, the Red Ogre advises him to stand up, and the Academy head complies. The director apologizes to the Red Ogre for sending Angie to this place, but explains that the city requested to honor her. The Baldgrief smiles, stating that he is glad she didn't miss the celebration to return home. During this time, Mr. Lionel quietly weeps for Angie's father's kindness. Mally scolds the Academy head, expressing admiration for his amazing qualities but ultimately deeming him useless. The Academy director is astonished by Mally's words but Mr. Bill advises her that it's not ethical or cultured behavior. Mary apologizes for her actions. Then, the girl with the big hat, Miriam, wants to get to know the girl from the Land of Elves, named Mari. In the meantime, the secretary informs them that Mary came to register at the Academy as an adventurer. The secretary calls Mary to complete the registration quickly. The Academy director then addresses them, mentioning that Mary came to register as an adventurer. However, the secretary returns to Mr. Bill and inquires about the authenticity of the matter regarding his daughter searching for a husband. She wants to confirm its credibility, leaving Mr. Bill shocked by her words. Then she quickly goes and informs him that she didn't say anything. We then see Mr. Bill, who appears very surprised, as evident from his facial expressions and eyes. Anise informs him that this matter is indeed true. She is searching for a girl for him to marry. Then we see Mr. Bill looking quite bewildered and shocked, but Anise tells him that it's true, and she is looking for a girl for him to marry. Next, we see Mr. Bill recognizing the little girl, and he introduces herself as Charlotte. He thanks him for saving her back in Bordeaux, and she rushes toward him, hugging him. Then, he asks them about the matter of searching for a wife. The scene shifts quickly when the Academy director is alarmed that people are witnessing them, as they are quite conspicuous with his wooden hair and leg. He instructs Mr. Bill that they need to manage the situation. In the meantime, the scene transitions to when the Academy director is shocked to find out that Mr. Bill is friends with Mr. Graham. However, Mr. Bill doesn't care. He wants to know the story behind the wife-searching inquiry. This astonishes everyone, and they tell him that he should ask his daughter Angie about it. Mary asks Mr. Bill if he is interested in getting married but the elf girl interjects, saying that his heart is already attached to a girl. This excites the girls, and they want to know who this girl is. They ask him if he came to Orphaland to find this girl, but he clarifies that he came here to track down his old friends, unsure if most of them are still adventurers or retired or even deceased. When Anise asks him about their names, he starts to tell her. There is a person named Percival, who was an excellent swordsman, and another named Kasim who was a powerful wizard, and Kasim, by the way, is the person currently in prison. He continues by mentioning another girl from the elves named Sutty. The academy director is surprised when he hears the names Percival and Kasim, and Mr. Bill tells them that both were adventurers of rank S. Percival was known as the Supreme Sword King. As for Kasim, he retired from adventuring but continued using his name as a sorcerer, earning the nickname Earthbreaker. However, both Kasim and Percival left the town a long time ago. Sutty, the elf girl, also left before them, concluding their careers at rank A. Mr. Bill thanks the academy director for providing him with this information, and the director apologizes for not knowing their current whereabouts. Still, Mr. Bill insists that having this information is enough, and he will search for them himself. Anise assures him that they will help him in this quest. Mary, who had been lost in thought, speaks up and reveals that she knows Mr. Bill's beloved from Orphalin, 
and her name is Suddy, the elf girl. The old couple enters the scene, greets everyone, and recognizes Mr. Bill as the Griffin Bill. The elderly man salutes him, but the man with white hair tells him to be silent, as he lacks proper etiquette. He introduces himself as Dordos and mentions that they are Angie's friends. Mr. Bill expresses great honor in meeting them and says he truly knows them. Shaborg is surprised that Mr. Bill knows him and laughs a lot. Then, Dordos tells Mr. Bill that they want to duel him. Shaborg expresses his desire to duel the Red Ogre, hearing about his great strength. Dordos also wants to fight him, wishing to see the swordsman who managed to deflect Angie's attacks before his death. Mr. Griffin tells them that he is not that impressive, but Shaborg thinks it's exciting. Shaborg is thrilled at the prospect of two powerful swordsmen clashing. Dordos, too, wants to witness it, and he's happy that he will get to see two strong swordsmen battle. He then expresses his joy at the thought of watching two powerful swordsmen face each other. Mr. Griffin, unaware of their expectations, agrees to the fight. Afterward, Mr. Griffin meets with friends and some townspeople who gather to witness the battle between Mr. Griffin and Shaborg. They prepare for the duel knowing that each of them is exceptionally strong. User, then the fight begins at this time, with Cheeborg attempting to strike Belgriff, but he manages to block his blows. Cheeborg then tries to attack him multiple times, but to no avail. After that, we see Belgriff hitting Cheeborg with his sword with great force on his arm, but as we know, Cheeborg is a very strong person who can deflect Belgriff's blow using his immense strength. Belgriff falls to the ground, appearing exhausted, but he conceals his immense strength. Cheeborg then mocks him for not finding anyone challenging enough to face him. He then suggests they go to the tavern to have their favorite drinks and tells him to share everything about himself. Dordos the Silver speaks to him, advising him to rest today to be in the best condition for tomorrow's duel. The next day, we see the beautiful Angie wearing a stunning dress, admiring herself in the mirror. She sees the beauty of the dress and realizes her indescribable natural beauty. Gail enters at this moment and tells her that she looks fantastic in the dress. Angie panics and asks Gail not to do that again. Gail laughs and assures her that she looks very beautiful and incredibly charming. Angie asks if her father will like it, and Gail says he will cry tears of joy at the sight of her beauty. Angie is overjoyed and asks Gail to go for a walk to test her ability to walk in the dress. Angie objects to this, saying she can walk easily. However, when she tries to walk, she falls immediately. Gail mocks her, saying she needs to learn to walk in it to avoid stumbling again. Angie gets angry. She tries to walk as Gail instructed, but she struggles, becoming frustrated. She wonders why people make dresses that hinder movement so much. Suddenly, as she strolls through the palace, she stumbles again. But at this moment, Mr. Fernand comes to Angie's rescue. He admires her beauty and asks where she's heading. Angie responds in a less than polite manner prompting Gail to bite her in the back. Angie realizes that Mr. Fernand is the heir to the Duke, and he engages her in conversation. Mr. Fernand expresses his surprise at not having seen her here before, despite being acquainted with all the beautiful girls in the vicinity. Angie reveals her name, and Mr. Fernand is captivated by her, as he never expected the Demon King's assassin to possess such beauty. Mr. Fernand requests to accompany her, suggesting they take advantage of the beautiful weather to stroll in the gardens rather than staying in the palace. He takes her hand, leading her outside. As they exit to the gardens, Mr. Francois, Mr. Fernand's elder brother, approaches them and inquires about Angie. Mr. Fernand informs him that she is an honored guest at the party. Mr. Francois, recognizing Angie as the black-haired warrior who killed the Demon King, introduces himself as Francois. He looks at her in a peculiar way, and Mr. Fernand continues to converse with her. Mr. Fernand mentions that his younger brother takes the responsibility of guarding the palace seriously. Francois warns his elder brother about the possibility of someone suspicious sneaking into the palace, emphasizing the need to be vigilant. He advises Mr. Fernand against scaring their guest, expressing concern that their father won't be pleased with such behavior. Francois insists on the importance of coordinating efforts to monitor the numerous guests. He then addresses Angie, cautioning her not to be overly confident, as unexpected challenges may arise during the party. Francois hints that there might be something between them all. The scene transitions to a mysterious place, a cell containing an unknown person.